Hello. We're talking about the skills needed to succeed in the fourth industrial revolution. Experts say that creativity, collaboration and critical thinking are going to be three critical skills. This means that playtime is going to become more important. I'm here with LEGO Foundation CEO, John Goodwin. John, welcome. Thank you. I see you've brought some props with you. Yes. Yeah. Explain those to me. Well, I thought we'd start by doing a, a quick illustration. Okay. So we have uh, some bricks in this bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by building a duck. A duck. So you're going to have okay. 30 seconds in yeah, order to I, build a book. No, 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 no. To open the bag so as well. start, okay. Yep, uh, start the timer, and then you've got 30 seconds in order to make a duck. Okay, okay. so ready, go. Are so you going to do it too? I will. Okay. I presume you've done this many times there. Uh, I've yeah, perhaps got a little bit of an advantage on you there. Uh, but the question is whether or not I can build something different this time to what I built last time, which is a challenge I always give myself. Oh, 20 seconds. Yeah, well done. There's my duck. Okay, there's your duck. It's more like a plane than a duck. Here's my duck. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. How was that? How was that experience? It was okay. I, uh, I think I went straight to put a couple of blocks together, put some wings on, rather than kind of thinking outside the box. Yeah. I think... Uh, I don't know. I mean, my, my, my duck's very in a different posture, different pose to yours. Yeah. But what you've got there is something that's great for you. Mm -hmm. You created that, and your brain was engaged in so many different ways when you were doing that exercise. You, know, you had to do the recognition of, okay, what, what does a duck look like, and how do I translate that? You had to do a lot of cognitive agility by, by able to figure out which configurations you're going to put together. Um, uh, you know, and then you had to do a lot of emotional control as well because you had the time period in order to do it. But at the end of the day, was it fun? It was. Yeah. It was. So I, I think my two-year-old son won't believe that I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, at the heart of what the Lego idea is all about. It's about playfully engaging children in, what, in the you know, joy of creation and pride of building. Because what this does is, is, through playful engagement, we're able to get the brain really active and develop the skills uh, which we believe are essential uh, to be creative, engaged, lifelong learners. Uh, so that's what the LEGO Foundation is all about. We own 25% of the LEGO Group, mm -hmm. and we're a, a charitable organization that's, that's, that's pursuing the aim of really educating the world around the power of play and the role it can take in terms of developing uh, people. Okay. I mean, one of the things we're here in Dalian talking about is science and technology and the fourth industrial revolution and uh, sort of mentioned in the opening that that's changing so some of the critical skills that we're going to need um, throughout life. Uh, can you can I sort of talk to me a bit about how that's changing? Like, what are you seeing from the LEGO Foundation? Yeah, well, what we've heard uh, through the, the conference already is the, the, uh, the need for a continual retooling of the workforce. What does that mean? It means that people need to be uh, adaptive and constantly reskilling themselves in order to keep pace with the workplace and the needs that are out there. You know, gone are the days where you could just invest yourself in creating the, uh, you know, uh, learning a single skill set that you'd then be able to apply throughout the rest of your lifetime through your, your working career. Uh, now we require people to be agile and adaptive mm -hmm. and to constantly evolve with, uh, with the workplace uh, to really be creative, engaged, lifelong learners. Uh, and that's really throwing a, a complete curveball into the, uh, the situation that we find ourselves from an education point of view because our education systems are still very much geared to uh, the, the previous century's way of working. How, how can we change that? Are there simple things that can be done? Yeah, um, I mean, we, we believe within the LEGO Foundation that we need to do uh, uh, an adjustment of the whole education process. Uh, we need to focus more on the development of skills uh, and less uh, on the retention of knowledge uh, because the testing methodology that we have through most of our education system uh, is fairly narrow in terms of the skills that it's actually developing. And to a certain degree, that knowledge retention is being usurped by the availability of data that we now have all around us. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we believe that you need the breadth of skills to be de developed through the education system in order to create the individuals that are going to be able to be effective uh, in the post-fourth industrial revolution. Uh, are you seeing any 
countries or examples of schools or, or whether it's curriculum or just education systems that are reflecting this change and are starting to do this well? Yeah, Brookings, uh, the Brookings Institute have done a fairly extensive study of uh, geographies around the world and how the different education systems are adapting uh, to this challenge of adoption of breadth of skills. Uh, and what they've looked at is whether or not the governments have recognised the need in their educational mission and vision, whether or not they are changing syllabuses in order to ensure that it's incorporated into the activities that children conduct, whether teachers are being developed in how to actually embrace uh, the different methodologies of, of uh, approaching education, and then whether or not at the end uh, children are being assessed in that, in that approach. Some of the countries that are doing uh, particularly well are, are countries like Singapore mm -hmm. um, have really acknowledged this need and are moving very rapidly. Um, but what I would say is that the, the speed of change that's taking place mm -hmm. in the workplace is moving much faster than the, the education systems. Uh, and we're really concerned around the fact that we could create a whole generation that is displaced from the marketplace that they need to operate in. Mm -hmm. Um, most people, I guess, finish school by the time they're 18, if not earlier, mm. and we're talking about lifelong learning. What is their role for organisations? Is it up to the individual or governments to, to foster that beyond 18? What, what do you see for people after 18? Yeah, I think it's um, up to uh, post-18 or, or, or post the formal education mm. system, should I say. Uh, I think there's a, a dual responsibility between governments and employers mm -hmm. uh, to take ownership for that development and continual uh, development of uh, their employees. And I think that needs to be fairly expansive in its thought process as well, rather than simply waiting for somebody to be unemployed mm -hmm. to then go through the training process. Instead, we need to constantly adapt our, our training. Um, but we also feel that it's very important that we get the capabilities to be those lifelong learners established very early on. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's been uh, lots of extensive studies that are being conducted that show uh, the early childhood development is a key phase in which we uh, develop those highways within our brain that enable us uh, to be those most effective lifelong learners. So it needs to be the whole system, from parents through to caregivers, through to teachers, through to education systems, uh, through to governments, and then ultimately through to employers that have that commitment to ensure that we're enabling the workforce. That's a, a fairly big overhaul, it mm. seems. How, how far along that path are we? Uh, well, from uh, our studies, we would say we're uh, very much at the early stage in most geographies. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting to get to a point where there's recognition of the need. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, Brookings have done that extensive study, and, uh, and through that, those, those three areas of, uh, of broad skills were identified most consistently through the government's uh, Adobe's also run an extensive study with parents who also identify the need. But unfortunately, uh, many parents are locked in their historical paradigm. So what they do is they overschedule their children and they look to do more testing in order to give them a CV that they believe will equip them to be effective. But that's very much looking at the world in the rearview mirror instead of looking through the windscreen. Uh, and what we need to do is really drive that awareness of... Uh, the importance of playful learning and a way of engaging children more effectively to be those lifelong learners. Yeah, I'm particularly interested in this concept of, of learning through play, which you've mentioned a few times. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? What does that mean and what does that look like for, um, for us? Yeah, well, within the foundation, we, uh, uh, we believe that children are role models in the context of how they learn. Uh, they, they're incredibly agile and engaging, collaborative, they're creative, they're innovative, and they're iterative mm. in how they learn. You know, to a child, you know, we could give them these bricks and they would create 20 different ducks uh, very, very effectively because they're just not limited by the parameters that we have through our experiences. Now, that's not to say that all experiences are bad. Of course they're not. We need to build upon those experiences. But also we need to have those highways established within our brains that enable us to also... Uh, think of opportunities and possibilities. So playful learning is a way in which you engage the child, putting the child's learning capabilities at the centre of the learning experience. 
So rather than being at the front of a classroom and giving a direction around the single outcome, instead getting them engaged in what we call hands-on, minds-on experiences to allow the children to explore and create new avenues of solutions that are relevant for them as individuals because that then enables you as you become an adult to approach problems in that unique way that gives a characteristic that forms breakthroughs. So while we're, we're in that transition phase, hopefully, of, of rebuilding this system and overhauling the education system and everything that goes with that, many parents may be wondering what they can do now while they're still in those systems and waiting for them to change. Is there something parents can do to help their kids foster this, these skills? Sure. The single thing that parents can do is play with their kids. Play is so maligned within society today. Uh, what we tend to do is we tend to think that, oh, we need to put them in a class or we need to put them in an after-school program or something like that. Just sitting down and playing with your children is fantastic. It's a way in which you can build the bonds and relationships with them, but also you can allow yourself to get your brain engaged in its most natural state for learning, which is the playful state. And it also gives the children self-confidence to lean into play as well and give them that forum by which they can feel relaxed in their learning environment. Uh, so the single most important thing is play. But if you have any questions, go to our website so you can get some ideas and inspiration. Fantastic. John Goodwin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.